Let me show you a way of evaluating QRadar even when you have any other SIM technology. I'm going to use Arc as an example here. The problem with your evaluation is that if you want to send first logs and, and then flows, but uh, just with logs alone, uh, those machines, let's say that I have all these uh, devices in here, are already sending logs into your XI connector. But we're going to show you that if you configure your ArcSight connector to send the logs to QRadar, let me first show you how QRadar automatically identifies the, in this particular case, the CES format that ArcSight uh, uses uh, for, for, the, for its logs. So in this example, we're going to start with a, uh, we're going to replace a set of QRadar of ArcSight logs that has uh, basically two machines with these two addresses and let's say that the address, the internet address of your ArcSight connector is 10.10.19. So we start by just, I'm going to use the log run command to replay those logs into Curator. Let's do that. So I SSH into the Curator box and use the log run command. I'm going to replay these uh, ArcSight logs, sending three events uh, per second and, and setting the, the IP address uh, as being the address of the uh, ArcSight uh, smart connector. So notice that at the beginning, Curator says, well, I'm log event because it waits to see until it gets uh, enough events to, to understand that, okay, this is something for me. And right after that, you start seeing how the events are actually nicely parsed. And, and, you know, everything looks good, except for the fact that we're going to address that uh, in the video later, that the source IP for all the events is the Arc, is the ArcSight connector's IP, which is not right. Uh, so going back to the to the actual drawing, we want to make sure that the IP addresses of these events are this one over here, not that one, which is the one that got actually resent. But uh, uh, just as a good starting point, because I'm going to pause the, the logs right now, we can actually see that uh, the events are nicely parsed and we got, you know, uh, the, the user ID, which in this case is system. So, and notice that this is the CEF format of the ArcSight logs. One point that I want to mention is when I uh, use the log run command, I use the option T for TCP uh, instead of the default, which is UDP. And that has to do with the fact that sometimes these uh, ArcSight logs are very long and, and the format of UDP will, will not allow long uh, messages to be sent and they will be uh, truncated. But again, good beginning. But how do we solve the problem of getting all those logs being looked upon as if they were coming from the Arc smart connector, the Arc smart connector instead of the individual addresses. And the trick to do that is actually to use a feature that Curator has called syslog redirect, in which instead of sending the logs in the standard port 514, we're going to be sending those to one uh, 517 instead and that's going to allow us to do a pre-processing of the actual logs and, and we are going to be replacing this address by the correspondent address where the source of the events actually come and if we go to the any one of the logs and, and, and like, like the one I had in the previous example notice that here in this parameter, the DVC is the actual IP address of the original or the real, in this particular case, a Windows machine that is actually sending the uh, actual events. So I'm going to start by going into the admin console under log sources, and I'm going to delete this uh, log source that was automatically auto discover. Uh, and the trick here is to click here on add, I already did that, and you create a syslog 
uh, a syslog redirect log. And so I gave it a name, syslog redirect. This is a description. The log source type has to be the universal DSM. The protocol configuration you pull down here from this menu and you get syslog redirect. The log source identifier, because these are ArcSight logs, is CEF. That's what comes at the beginning of the actual file. And in here, we need to put the regular expression that is going to look for that DVC IP address. Um, and we'll see that is in uh, group uh, one. In fact, if we go to, I'm going to use regex101.com, and you put this regular expression DVC, and then you put the the, the parameters to, to pick up the IP addresses, uh, but you, you get the, look here on the right, the group one, and you see that it's perfectly matching green, the IP address. So that's precisely what we want. So you put the group one, again, the, the port by default, when uh, the, the syslog redirect will select port 517. Again, the protocol we want it to be TCP. Uh, we don't want to uh, have an uh, coalesced uh, the events um, and basically you do that. Once you create a, this uh, new log source, because you create that one manually, you need to actually deploy the changes. So I already did that, so I don't have to uh, deploy the changes. So what we're going to be doing next is actually replay the, the logs as we did before but now the port, we do the dash P option and we specify that the port is going to be 517. And if you see those uh, events were actually uh, replayed. And as we see already, the, the source IP is actually the original source IP. And we can actually, you know, click on any one of these uh, of this event. Let me actually pause it here and click on any of the uh, any event and we see the right uh, source IP and we actually see that this is the f the CES format from ArcSight and it has been properly parsed. Also if we go into the admin tab we should see here the, lo the log sources one for every one of the individual Windows events that were actually auto discover. I hope that uh, you can use this tool. Again, I, I show it with ArcSight as an example, but you can use it with any other SIEM that you want to send the logs to QRadar, but you want to take advantage of the syslog redirect and do that pre-processing and, and correct. Uh, in particular, I show in the in the case here the the source IP to reflect the real one of your uh, locks. Once you get this this going, you're going to start seeing uh, nice offenses, all the intelligence from Curator and the, in my view, the biggest value of Curator, which is, you know, the actual rules that uh, that has a tremendous amount of logic that helps you, you know, identify threats that you are not even looking for. And that's the beauty of Curator. Once you know what you're looking for, it's easy to do any search tool to do so. The beauty of Curator is when you send the logs, it's going to find things that are out of place automatically for you. Like for example, in this uh, particular case, in, in previous days, I actually, that's uh, on October uh, 13, I actually replay some attacks from, uh, actually I detonated the, the actual WannaCry attack infecting machine uh, 204, on a different case, and bang, I get uh, my offense already firing and indicating uh, that malicious event. So I hope you take advantage of the syslog redirect to bring sources uh, first to Curator without having to reconfigure all your uh, network. Once you try and like Curator, you, you will eventually want to actually point all those arrows directly into Curator. But this allows you to do uh, soft evaluation, soft and quick evaluation of the value of it.